All right, Comedy Bubble. Hey, Billy Baratatos, huge fan from Pakistan. Saw you at the Atlanta Punchline a few months ago, and it was amazing. Thank you very much. Recently, I've noticed some established comedians on social media shitting on open micers and newer comedians for trying their luck at comedy. Yeah, that's not, nobody funny is doing that. I get that there are a lot of comedians around now, and comedy in general is very trendy, especially with Netflix releasing a special every week this year. But is it fair to say there is a comedy bubble now? Is it even worth it for an aspiring or up-and-coming comic to try their hand at it? Wanted to get your take on this. Uh, love your stand-up, the podcast, and episode of Family. Thanks. And go love yourself. Um, look at that for the holidays. Great, great, great question. All right. Um, stand-up comedy is always going through some sort of... Uh, up or down, as is any business. You know what I mean? Look at the NBA. The NBA was through the roof popular, right through the Jordan era, then it made a dip, and now it's starting to come back. And then LeBron and all those guys, it brings it back up and down, up and down. NFL's on a little dip here. Tom Brady towards the end of his career. Peyton Manning's gone. Andrew Luck's hurt. Aaron Rodgers gets hurt. Parody and all that. They got to figure it out. There's always ups and downs, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't go after your dream. I started comedy March 2nd, 1992, after the big 80s bubbles burst, and there was a bunch of, uh, not a bunch, but there was a number of older comics um, when I started out that tried to discourage me from starting. None of the funny ones. Um, they go, look at this, look at this crowd, this place is like half full, you know, fucking two years ago, there'd be a line around the block, there's a line around the block. You know, and they used to get me all depressed and that type of stuff. Um, any established comedian that shits on an open micer and tries to discourage them is not even worth your time. Like, how pathetic is that? What else are you going to do? You're going to make fun of a toddler learning how to walk? Did you just give her a bath? Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, all right, I need to get off this because she's getting more annoyed by the second that I'm on here. Whatever, it's my Christmas too. I enjoy podcasting. Um, yeah. Those people are not even worth your time. And is there a comedy bubble right now? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You put out 50, one network put out 52 hour long specials in a year. You, you, you can't do that. It stops being special. It becomes like a, like a, like a fucking log jam. And, you know, you need to have space. It has to breathe. It's like a song. You can't have everybody doing a tap on solo at the same time. It just becomes noise. Um, but you know, this is the, uh, I think it's gone up twice since I've been doing it. You know, it, it dip, 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 boom, 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 all in the beginning of my first eight years of my career. And then after nine 11, it went up, it went up, it went up, it went up. And then it started to come back down again. And then, uh, the, ability for comedians to shoot their own specials and sell them made it go up 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 and i would think that the the peak of this it's like a housing bubble with stand-up specials that one network has 52 of them but the thing about netflix is it's also global so it's not like um they're just doing it for the united states you know which would be insane if you just did that for one country. It's for everybody around the world. So maybe that levels it out. I mean, from what I've heard from Netflix, they're going to try to have more of an international flavor next year when they do it. I have no idea. I have no idea. But I don't. That's it's beyond my control. I'm not the one who decides, nor should I be. How much, how many specials get put out there or whatever, but it's not going to discourage me from trying to write my best hour. Um, but it's definitely making me think about how to release and when to release my next one. Um, yeah, I, I hope I answered your question, but dude, if you want to do stand up, you got to do it. It's the greatest fucking job ever if you're good at it. If not, it's, uh, you know. I'll tell you, it's a rough one, okay? But yeah, don't ever listen to any fucking ass. Don't listen to anybody in general, whatever business you're in. Somebody discourages you. What kind of an asshole does that? 
Hey, I'm going to do this. Oh, you know, I don't know why you want to do that. I mean, unless you're talking about trying heroin. You know, other than that, I think I want to start my own business. Oh, probably going to go under. I just, it's actually, I will tell you, it's actually good that somebody's doing that to you, that you're getting that this early in this business, because the key to success is tuning those people out. And, and being around positive people that say things that make you feel better about what you're going after. Now, I'm not saying that at some point you won't have an idea that is, you know, you need to think about again. You know what I mean? So somebody be like, hey, man, you might want to watch out because of blah, 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 blah. I'm not saying that a negative response. It's not even negative. Constructive criticism. There's always got to be a place for that. But you can't have people... Uh, who are just being negative just because you're going out and doing something. And you'll be able to tell the difference. All right.